you just learned a lot of new things about Bootstrap in order to complete this project. But how would someone who already knows Bootstrap approach our same problem? Let's ask Jacques and find out. To continue our series of throwing random things at him to get his attention, let's throw this ginormous penguin. So we're gonna actually take uh, this design and go through it with Bootstrap uh, and turn it into at least a first pass with HTML and CSS. Okay, so here's an image that we've been given by a designer and I'm just gonna go through the process that I go through when I take something like this and turn it into a web page. I'm gonna be using Bootstrap and I have a lot of work knowledge of Bootstrap. So when I use classes from Bootstrap, don't worry if you don't know them off the top of your head. I use them almost every day, so they're right there for me. But you can go look at the documentation for Bootstrap. It is very complete, and they have all kinds of demos and things like that that you can really dive into. So if there's something you want to do and you want to see if Bootstrap does it, go check out those documents. All right, so basically everything on the web is in boxes at the moment. So we start with the biggest box. That's our browser, the, the whole page here. And we'll work down from there. If I'm looking at a design like this, I'm going to start picking out those boxes. And so the first one would be this, this top area here with the logo and the name. There's an HR, a horizontal rule that cuts through everything here. We have this center area with the main image. And then we've got a box down here that has the featured work and then sort of the contents of that. And so that'll be my first cut. And when I'm looking at that, I'm also seeing in this, for instance, in this featured work area, there are three boxes, three sets of content. They're all identical, and I'll probably just be splitting that whole row up into these three columns. Same with the top here, where we have a box that the logo's in and a box that the name is in. Um, so I go through it and I look at it first. It's really helpful to work through the image in your head first and sort of understand where your boxes are. It'll make coding it up a lot easier. Okay, so jumping into the code here, this is sort of just my starting, my jumping off point. This is mostly just boilerplate. I'll walk through it really quickly here. We're basically just telling the browser that yes, we're HTML, we're setting our doc type, we're saying the language in this case is English. We're setting our character set here. That basically just makes sure that the browser is displaying the characters in the way that I intend it to. The next meta tag down here is just telling Internet Explorer, use the best engine you've got. Give the user the most up-to-date experience. The meta tag here is for mobile. And what we're saying is just sort of how to display the page initially when it loads. There's a title tag. You should always name your pages. We'll call this the the puppy portfolio. The thing below that is actually us bringing Bootstrap into this page. And that's pretty much it for our for the head of our document. The body is where we're going to start putting in uh, the page itself. So when we start up with Bootstrap, we're going to put everything inside of the Bootstrap's container. And then going back to our mock here, we'll just start with this top section. So I'm going to have I'm going to make a row with the logo and the name in it. Now I'm using, I'm going to just split this right down the middle. We might decide to do it a little off center or something like that. But for right now, I'm just going to cut it down the middle. Everything in Bootstrap is done in 12 columns. So the whole width is divided up into 12 different columns. And so we'll start out splitting it in half, six for each. So we'll drop in our logo here. In images, it'll be logo.png. Always make sure you set alt text. Alt text allows people to see and understand your website when maybe the image didn't load or um, if they're visually impaired, their screen reader will read the contents of this instead of obviously being able to display that image to them. All right, so here we're gonna put in uh, the name, at this whole area over here, this Jane Doet, and her subtitle. And I'm just going to put these in heading tags right now. The H1 in general is the most important thing, the title, the largest piece, the largest heading on the website, and they go down from, from there. So now if we go over to our page, 
we actually have we have our logo and we have our name but you'll notice that the name doesn't we're not really looking a whole lot like our mock at the moment the mock is right aligned and capitalized and here we are left aligned and, and normally capitalized and so if we apply a style to this md6 div here this the container of that name of the name and the subtitle we're actually going to apply those styles across everything now bootstrap has some nice uh, built-in methods text right and text uppercase and those will pull all of the text to the right side and those will set the text to all be uppercase and again don't expect to know all of these going out the gate Bootstrap's documentation is, is really good about this, and if you're browsing through there, you'll just pick up things every time you look at it. So now refreshing our page, there we go. Now we've our text is on the right, everything's capitalized, and we'll move on from there. So the next thing I'm looking at in the mock is this horizontal rule, and we'll drop that in next. All right, so you'll notice that the horizontal rule for Bootstrap is very thin. Uh, we can come back and address that later. Right now, we're just going to go through with just the vanilla capabilities of Bootstrap, and we'll worry about fine-tuning and doing all that kind of stuff later. So going back to our mock, the next thing up is this big sort of central image here. So that'll be taking up all 12 columns, and we'll drop that in. So the source of our images will be in images. So now if we go to our page, there's a puppy. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice is that it's actually coming off the edge of the screen here it's actually overflowing its container and so we can go and we can use a bootstrap class which is responsive which will make sure that that image pulls itself in to fit inside of its of its parent container so that that called the 12 columns this image now fits inside of it so there's our there's our first puppy now the puppies are starting to make sense let's go back to our mock the next section we're going to work on here is just this featured work so we'll consider featured work to be its own 12 columns wide and then we'll have each one of these sort of featured work elements be their own four columns wide each for call fours each and we'll just split it up and we're going to just work through it top to bottom featured work is sort of the second most important title on our page uh, it's a section heading here so we're going to use an h2 you can flip back and forth in between your browser and your coding environment to make sure that, you know, sort of just sanity check along the way. when we have repeated elements like this, we can actually just code them up once and copy and paste that it, in this case, a couple X more times and then update the elements within it. It will save us a little bit of typing and a little bit of time. All right, so there's our, there's our puppy, there's our title, so let's add And that image responsive will just make sure that that puppy stays inside of his of his little container here. So now we've got one of them. We can just copy paste over a few more times and then modify those, and we should be coming up uh, close to what our to what our mock looks like. So let's go grab that text and we'll just do some updates here. Now I'm copying and pasting to save myself a little bit of time typing, but make sure when you copy paste that you actually are updating the everything that you need to update it's very easy to introduce errors uh, when you're copying and pasting because you might not see one of the minor differences so maybe it's not changing this image source or not changing the alt text just go through and make sure that you're that you're really thorough when you copy paste it's a shortcut but make sure you don't take it too casually all right so there are our featured work